Hey everyone, in this video we're going to deploy vCenter 7.0. Now, vCenter itself is kind of out of the scope of this video series around NSXT 3.0, but I wanted to show it so that you guys can follow along in your home lab. It's relatively straightforward. One of the key things you want to do is make sure you check compatibility between vCenter, vSphere, and the NSXT version you're using. In my case, I'm using vSphere 7.0 vCenter 7.0 and NSXT 3.0, and those are all compatible with each other. So if you follow along using those versions, you should be fine. So to get started, you're gonna need this ISO image, this VCSA ISO, and you can download that from my VMware. Once you have it, you're gonna to wanna to put it on some kind of Windows system. In my case, I'm running a jump box that is a Windows VM. Uh, I actually run Macs for all of my personal stuff. So in this case, I, I have this jump box strictly for anything that requires Windows. Now, once you get it on that Windows box, you're actually gonna go into it and you need to mount it somehow. So however you do that will vary depending on how you, you know your personal laptop or your VM or whatever it is is set up, but you'll ultimately wanna mount that ISO so that you can access the files from inside of it. Uh, once you get in there, you're gonna go to VCSA UI installer. And for me, I'm on Windows, so I'm gonna go to Windows. Once we get in here, we're gonna go down to installer and we're gonna launch that. That's gonna bring up the 7.0 installer wizard. Uh, and from here, we'll just pretty much go through the standard install process. So what this is asking for is the actual deployment target for where vCenter is gonna sit. So I'm gonna go check and make sure I have the right one. So I'm gonna deploy vCenter to this host right here, to 254.10. So I need to, up, oh, and that's already in there, so that's good. Put in my credentials here. This is gonna give it access to go into vCenter and actually uh, deploy the OVA itself or the appliance. This is asking for the actual name of the VM. I'm gonna go with mg-vcsa01 and I'll type in my password. And this is my password specifically for vCenter. We'll hit next. I'm gonna stick with the standard deployment of a size of tiny. I, I'm not needing anything larger for a lab and I would recommend you do the same. From a data source standpoint, nothing fancy here. Uh, you definitely wanna make sure that enable thin disk mode is, is on, unless you just have a ton of storage and you wanna use it. So here's where we're actually gonna input the details for the VCSA appliance itself. So what is the IP, what's the FQDN, um, you know, where's my default gateway, what are my DNS servers, my NTP, all of that. Uh, I will say that one thing to watch out for here is it, it shows FQDN is optional. I highly recommend you put a DNS entry and run a DNS server in your lab. It's not required, but I have run into issues where sometimes vCenter wasn't too happy that I didn't have any DNS entries for it. I don't have anything hard to back that up, but I, I think it is a pretty good recommendation. So I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna select my network. Now one thing you'll notice here is the networks that are available for me to select, um, and you might not notice this, but I do because it's my lab, but these are all off of V switches. These are standard switches in vCenter. Um, and the problem with that is I don't actually have uh, any physical interface behind these. So for example, I do need to get onto VLAN 251, but in this case, I'll actually hop over and show you guys. If we look at this host and we go down to virtual switches right here, we can see I have two virtual switches on this host. I have a distributed switch, main VDS is the name, and I also have a standard switch, vSwitch0. You'll recognize these names, these port group names, outside network on VLAN 999, V251, which I was just talking about, and VM network. Here's the thing though, see right here, physical adapters, it shows no physical network adapters. So if I place the vCenter on that port group, it's going to break things. Now, the solution here is, is really, I have a couple options. One, I can add an interface to that standard switch. So I have an uplink. So when I select this, it doesn't deploy and then not work. Or I can just deploy it with this and then go back into vCenter and change it to the right network, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna select that for now. 
and I'll give it all of the proper IP and all of that. And I'll just have to make sure once it deploys into vCenter that I go in and change that network to the proper one. For FQDN, I'm gonna go with mgvcsao1.home.lab. I'm gonna stick with this IP address. I actually had this deployed and blew it away and I, I just used the same IP over. So, uh, but it is a fresh deployment. Everything else here is pretty self-explanatory. Um, nothing out of the ordinary, so I'm gonna hit next. And we'll hit finish. All right, so since the deployment looks like it's stuck at 80%, which by the way is pretty common when you deploy vCenter, it will normally sit here for a while. I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to go fix that network and select the right network. So I'm gonna do that real fast in vCenter. And we've got our appliance here. I'm gonna to go to edit settings and I'm gonna select browse under network adapter and now I'm gonna select the proper network. So this is the same VLAN, but this one actually has a physical, a physical interface backing it. So that should be good. There we go. So I'm gonna let it go. At this point, we should be good once it continues. This way we'll have continued reachability to the appliance. All right, so the vCenter deployment is finished. Now I wanted to explain one thing briefly, which is typically, as you see here, everything looked fine. So if I hit continue, I'll go into kind of part two deployment of the vCenter, which is really configuration. However, if things broke along the way or the network wasn't set up properly and you didn't have access to it, you basically would have to go resolve that and then hit this URL and then you could resolve or, or continue to do your vCenter configuration. In my case, everything looks to be fine, so I'm gonna hit continue. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and continue through here. From a time standpoint, I am gonna enable SSH. I always do for uh, my home lab and the NTP setting is fine. We do want to create a new SSO domain. I just stick with the default, which is vSphere.local. So my, my login when I get into this will actually be administrator at vSphere.local. I'm going to set a password for that account. The only case where you would join an existing SSO domain is if you had already deployed vCenter, then you could actually uh, have a shared vCenter environment, basically. Uh, that's out of scope for today, but at a high level, that's what this is for. So we're going to hit next. I'm going to send some data to VMware, of course. All right, so here we can review our settings. I'm just going to kind of gloss through these. IP address looks good. Default gateway is good. We have DNS. Uh, NTP is fine. All right, so I think we're good. So we're going to hit finish and give this a few minutes. All right, so vCenter is done deploying. So let's go hit it at the URL right here at the uh, FQDN and see if we can get access to vCenter now. So I'm gonna close this. And let's see. So there's our vCenter. So let's go ahead and log in and make sure everything is functioning properly. And then we're gonna go on to actually setting up our vSphere host, uh, which will actually host our VMs. And then finally, we'll tie those hosts back into vCenter. We'll actually add them as a new cluster inside of vCenter. So here's where we're gonna throw our SSO credentials in, which mine was administrator at vSphere.local and yours would be too if you matched my configuration. And let's hit login. So there we go. So we got into vCenter fine, everything looks good. Uh, while we're here, I'm gonna create a data center and this will basically be just be a container for all of the clusters, which we're gonna create in a little bit. Uh, so I'm just gonna call it uh, Tampa. Hit okay. That is good. And while I'm there, I'm gonna create a couple of clusters. I'm not gonna put any hosts in these clusters. These are just gonna be kind of placeholders. The first one I'm gonna call compute cluster. This is gonna be where I'm gonna actually put my hosts that are gonna have the VMs sitting on them. So I have my web and app segments. 
that'll be the purpose of this cluster. I'm not turning on any of these features for now since it's just a lab. So I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna create another cluster. This one I'm gonna call edge cluster. And this one I'm gonna use exclusively for my edge VMs. So this is, and a lot of times this can be used as uh, you know, an infrastructure cluster management slash edge. There's a few different designs that people go with, but again, since it's a lab environment, I'm just gonna stick with edge cluster and that's all it'll be used for. So I'm gonna hit okay. So that looks good. All right, so vCenter is good to go for now. We do still need to add our host to vCenter and set up some of the networking, but I'm gonna come back to that after we configure our vSphere 7.0 host or actually deploy them rather. Um, so I'm gonna end this video and we'll pick up with the vSphere 7.0 deployment.